Hey everybody, it is Thursday, April 2nd, 2020, and I wanted to share with you today this super interesting article that was published in a newspaper about our favorite, one of our favorite insects, the monarch butterfly. This article is really interesting because, well, for a couple of reasons. You know that we have adopted five monarch caterpillars at our house. Um, I have been searching for the sixth baby. I still can't find him. So, but I do believe that there is a egg. So I'm going to watch him, see if he hatches. Okay, so more details there. But I thought this uh, article would be interesting to share with you today because it talks about our two different major species of monarchs. First of all, we have the western monarch butterfly and the eastern monarch butterfly. So the eastern monarch is the monarch that you and I know. It's the type of uh, caterpillars that we're currently raising and those monarchs are the ones that travel from uh, Canada, Ohio, New England area, our area in the United States to Mexico. They're the ones that migrate. Now the western um, monarch butterflies just stay along the western part of the United States uh, like along basically the California coast. Okay, They breed as far in um, in California and out, actually out towards Idaho, even in the farthest reaches. So the western monarch butterflies are seeing the same decline in population numbers that our eastern monarch butterflies are as well. But this article is really interesting because it talks about some of the things that are happening to butterflies in general that are making their population numbers drop. So one of the first big things is that Let's see. One of the first big things that I wanted to mention was that um, many years ago on farming, on farmland, in between crops would be like a woodsy barrier. And many times the western monarchs would lay their eggs there. They would, there would be wild native milkweed there that would, um, that they would feed on, right? And then you know, their, their populations would regenerate and that kind of thing. So now farmers, their crop lands are going directly to the edge of the barrier, edge of the land basically, and there's no woodsy barriers. So their habitat is really becoming sparse. Also, people are planting tropical milkweed, much like this milkweed I have from Florida. It doesn't come back every year. It is a perennial instead of or it's an annual instead of a perennial. So it doesn't come back every year. Native milkweed, especially to um, the Ohio River Valley where we are, it comes back every year. And also, the tropical milkweed that I have from Florida never drops its leaves. And so it, the plant just behaves differently than the native milkweed does. What's really interesting is that um, the western milk, or I'm sorry, the western monarch butterflies are basically the same color, but they're just a little darker. But what I think is fascinating, and this is very similar to how um, our eastern monarch butterflies cluster, is they cluster together in these trees. Um, and remember, a group of monarch butterflies is called a kaleidoscope. So they cluster together in these kaleidoscopes. I think it's beautiful. Um, one last thing I want to mention. There's a picture here on the bottom of the article. And it kind of looks like a painting, doesn't, doesn't it? But what scientists have done is they have uh, used infrared technology. Um, a type of te technology that, using, that uses different imaging techniques um, that allows researchers, scientists, to see the really intricate parts on, of the monarch's um, wings. And what they found is that there are cells that live on the wings that allow them to remain cooler than other parts of their body and other breeds of butterflies. So it's just something that the butterfly has um, developed over time to be to become more resistant 
to temperature changes, they found that uh, where the western monarch butterflies live, temperatures in the winter have risen around 2 degrees Celsius every year for the past few years. So it's very interesting that these monarchs have made such kind of interesting adaptations to the way their wings are constructed that now allow them to um, resist the feeling of heat, to have the heat just kind of wick off of them because of these interesting cells. So I just thought this interesting was fat this article was fascinating and I wanted to share it with you today. We will continue to track the um, life cycle of our eastern monarch butterflies together. I do feel like I need to feed them a little bit more today. I already fed them this morning, but they are hungry, hungry caterpillars. And so I'm going to pick some more um, of our milkweed and bring it inside to their habitat to make sure that they are, you know, have lots of food to eat and they are healthy and happy little caterpillars. So thank you so much. Enjoy your day. I will see everyone tomorrow. Bye.